All right, Professor Cooper here with another video. Um, this is going to be the first in the introduction to Tidyverse. So uh, just in case you've forgotten, you have to load the package Tidyverse, which means first you might have to install the package Tidyverse. And just for review, if you need to install a package, you can go up to the tools in RStudio and install packages and type out tidyverse and then you run the install and then anytime you need the code from a package you have to activate it using the library function i've actually already done that here uh, so i'm going to talk a little bit about the tidyverse the tidyverse is basically a large bundle of code used to sort of streamline, make more efficient, and more user-friendly, um, a lot of different functions that you would want to use in data analysis. Um, the one thing that people have an issue with when it comes to the tidyverse is that it tends to be very package dependent, uh, which means other packages, other bits of code need to function well for it to also function because it calls on them. So you may run into a problem every once in a while when you're in the tidyverse where one of the small packages that somebody else created that tidyverse uses is somehow defunct for some period of time. Maybe it's being updated, maybe there is a bug or maybe it is no longer being used at all and it is completely defunct. Um, and that, you know, so it depends on the issue. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but it will happen occasionally. Um, but when it's working, it's really good. It's very user-friendly, very powerful, and can do a lot of things very efficiently. And the code tends to be a little bit more common sense on the front end. Okay, so we're going to just jump into an example. Um, I'm going to load a data set from the base R data sets. Uh, you do so by typing data, and then you type the name of the data set in quotations. So we're going to load MT cars. This is a toy data set that exists inside R. Everybody's got it. So you can use it as like an example to run some code on. I'm going to show you the head of the data set. This head function shows you the top six observations of any data set. Now you can make it show you more than that or fewer than that um, with an extra argument for, for the number of observations you want to see. But it's useful just to see the head just to make sure everything um, was functioning properly. All right, and it looks like it is. So you can see with this data set, you have uh, labels for the observations instead of an observation counter, which you can you can create yourself for your own data sets. And then you have a series of variables here. I'm not going to explain all of them, but this first one is um, miles per gallon, uh, also known as fuel efficiency, right? Uh, cylinders, displacement, horsepower. Um, this one is weight in thousands of pounds, I believe. And this is the quarter mile time in seconds. Um, automatic or manual, the number of gears, something about the carburetor. Um, anyway, there you go. Okay. We're going to work with this data set for the next couple of examples. Um, I'm also going to show you the piping functions in Tidyverse, which are really useful because sometimes when you have to use two or three or four functions at the same time, if you use base programming uh, language, you might end up with a series of parentheses, three, four, five sets of parentheses in a row where you're stuffing a command inside a command, inside a command, inside a command, etc. It gets to be very difficult, if, especially if you're sharing it with somebody else, but even on your own, to read it. Um, and the piping functions from the Magritte R package, which is inside Tidyverse, allow you to unpack that and do it sequentially instead. 
and I'm going to show you how that works. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a quote unquote tibble, which is just a tidy table. Um, you'll find that um, a lot of the things that are named in the tidyverse are um, intended to be clever uh, in this case. So I'm going to create a tibble called car tibble. The function is just as dot tibble. So we're this you're going to see this as dot or as underscore a lot. It just means I'm going to change the object classification going from data frame to tibble in this case. All right. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you. So right now we're looking down here. This is the head of a data frame, but I'm going to change it to a tibble and show it to you. All right. See, nothing really happened too much. The only difference is it's organized a little bit differently and it shows you some different information right at the front. So it shows you 10 instead of six, and then it cuts it off and shows you how many more rows there are. But what else it does that's interesting, that's useful, is this part right here, right at the top, right underneath the labels for the variable names, for the column names, it shows the class of each variable. All of these are DBLs, that stands for double, which we've talked about before, which is the same as numeric, which means continuous numbers. So these are all treated like continuous numbers right now. I'm going to, again, show you real fast the difference between what the regular data set as a data frame looks like versus the tibble version. Not much to it, not much different, but it shows you some different information right at the front. Okay, we're going to jump right into some functions and some piping. We're going to start with the filtering function from Tidyverse. Filter uh, subsets your data set, and it subsets according to some values in one of your, at least one of your variables. So right here, and here's the piping function that I was talking about before that helps you unpack multiple functions at once. All right. I'm going to start with, I'm going to say going from MT cars, the data set. I'm going to apply, I'm going to go from starting with MT cars, pipe, filter, and now I don't have to call the data set because I already know I'm inside the MT cars data set because of the MT cars pipe. Cylinder equals equals six because remember it is a numeric. And what I'm filtering for is only cars that have six cylinders. Okay. Notice. Cars with cylinders that are six. All right. Six cylinder vehicles in the data set. Okay. Now let's try a different one. This time I'm going to filter on two different variables at once. I can say, you know what? I want to find all the cars that have six cylinders and four gears. So this filter here as cylinder equals equals six, and then an and operator. This means that both of these things have to be true at the same time. You would be wise to familiarize yourself with uh, the uh, logical operators in R. Things like the and or not equals. We'll talk about these more at length. This is one of them. It is the and. So filtering for everything where cycle uh, cylinders, sorry, equals equals six. So when cylinders equal six and the gears are equal to four. And you can see that there are four vehicles that have six cylinders and exactly four gears. That is enough of an introduction for filter. It is very simple. Um, it subsets your data set. It takes rows. It subsets by row. 
arranging simply rearranges the order of your data set. So let's say I want to arrange the order of the data set by the weights of the cars. It's going to show me, it's going to return the data set, the full data set, but arranged in ascending order, the weight of the vehicles. You can look at weight and you can see the lowest value weight all the way to the highest value weight. So the lightest to the heaviest. You can also flip this with a negative or a descending uh, function. It's very easy. Notice, now watch what happens though. If I just type empty cars again, that disappears and it's no longer arranged by weight. And the reason, if you haven't figured it out, is because I haven't saved this as a new object. Like what you would really want to do is make a copy of the data set. If you were doing something that you wanted to save, if you needed to save the new version of the data set for some reason, where you filtered or you arranged or you've created a new variable or something, you need to save a copy of it as a new data set. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to create a new variable and add it to the end of a data set with a mutate function. Mutate is how you create a new variable. Um, it attaches that variable to the end of the data frame uh, or tibble or data table. And the way it works is with the mutate function, you have to immediately name the new variable and then define it according to some rule. Okay. Empty cars pipe, that means we're going inside empty cars, and then mutate is the function. So open close parentheses. And then this is the name that I'm giving the new variable mean weight equals the mean, which is another function in R that I'm now introducing you to. It's just the average of a number. And remember, all the variables in this data set are numeric. Mean weight equals the mean of all the weights. All right, I'm going to run it. And you can see here at the end, I've added a new variable called, called mean weight. It's the same value repeated a bunch of times because all it is is the average weight of all the cars, right? But what uh, mutate does is it adds it as a new variable to every observation. Now, here is the thing. Let's say we wanted to keep that. We go back and we do this. It's gone, right? Because we did not save it as a new object. So what you might consider doing is calling something like MT cars 2 and saving it with the new variable attached to it at the end. Because now if I do that and I type MT cars 2, I've got that new variable that I needed right at the end of the data frame and I can do something with it. Um, now, sometimes you can, you can operate on this new variable without saving it and pipe right into like a plot or something like that. But there are times also when you're going to want to save the new data set with the new variables that you've created. All right. Um, that is an introduction to all the things that you'll be doing for the assignment for the second week in terms of the basics of uh, filtering, arranging, and mutating. Uh, I'm going to show you some basics on plotting next.